Hey college football fans, welcome to another episode of Walk It Off with Chappie, where today we're gonna give a little spotlight shout out. And I wanna highlight the teams that prognosticators like myself expected to struggle to start off this season. I'm talking about teams like Kansas, Syracuse, Duke, and Vanderbilt. So some pretty prestigious universities in terms of academics, not the best in football the last few years. Well many of them are under new coaches. So Duke has a first year coach, Mike Elko, longtime defensive coordinator at places like Wake Forest, Notre Dame, Texas A&M most recently. Syracuse has had Dino Babers, I think this is his fifth year now. And then Vanderbilt and Kansas are in their second year with their new, new head coach, relative new head coach, Lance Leipold at Kansas. This is year two for him as it is year two for Clark Lee. Leipold, kind of an offensive minded guy. Lee, a defensive coordinator who has also had his hand in some pretty big programs. So combined, these eight teams have started the season off eight and one in a total of nine games. They've gone six and one against FBS opponents. So only two of those combined eight wins have come against FCS opponents. Compared to last year when these four teams started off a combined one and four against FBS competition. So they also had a couple FCS wins in there, but we don't really like to count that. Let's start with Kansas in the Big 12. So 56 to 10, trouncing of Tennessee Tech, an FCS team at home. Then they went on the road last weekend, scored 55 points in a victory over West Virginia. A victory that very, very well may have been one of the nails in the coffin for head coach Neil Brown, I'm sorry to say. Kansas right now is the number seven overall efficient team according to ESPN's efficiency rankings, number two in offense. That's right, they are the second most efficient offense in college football, Kansas is. And they're getting it done with quarterback Jalen Daniels. Daniels, 70% to start the season, four touchdowns to just one interception, has not been sacked any times at all, zero times. He's carried the ball 15 opportunities for a 7.6 yard average. Dude's got some wheels on him, but he's also been a very productive, very efficient quarterback back there for the Jayhawks. Um, he also has put one in the end zone on the ground. Kansas overall can run the football. They have shown to be uh, physical enough on the offensive line and running back Devin Neal is averaging over 100 yards a game. As a team, they're rushing for 250 yards a game, 7.5 yards per carry. Their top four rushers on that KU team are averaging over seven a carry. On the defensive side, Lonnie Phelps, transfer from Miami of Ohio, is wreaking havoc in backfields. He's got three sacks in two games. Um, he's third in the team in tackles with a total of um, 15, I believe, or 12, I think it's 12. Nonetheless, Kansas is getting the job done mostly offensively, but they're also very efficient in special teams, number nine in special teams efficiency, according to ESPN. So they take their 2-0 record on the road into H-Town against a Houston Cougar team that is stinging from an overtime loss to Texas Tech last week. So if the Jayhawks can not only go on the road and win in Houston, against a team that's gonna have a lot of motivation, you would hope, to, to win, especially when a lot of people were picking Houston to be possibly uh, a, uh, an outside shot at the CFP from the group of five. Kansas can certainly write their ticket as to being turning the page into being a, uh, a contender, at least for a bowl game, with a victory over the Cougs this weekend. The next team, Syracuse, number 30 in ESPN's FBI rankings. FPI rankings, sorry. So Syracuse, again, 2-0, 31-7 trouncing of Louisville at home. That was the game I was high on Louisville, but uh, I, I had a feeling that if the Qs showed up to play and they beat Louisville in that opener, that could really set a positive tone for the Orange this season. And kudos to whoever told me that I was wrong in picking Syracuse to struggle this year. And um, forgive me for not remembering your name, but if you know who you are, call me out on Twitter and I will certainly send praise your way for having the, the thought that Syracuse was going to kind of turn the corner this year. 
So what's Syracuse doing well? Well, oh, forgot to mention, they also beat UConn 48 to 14 in week two, and they dusted them. It was a complete domination from a Syracuse offense. I mean, 48 points, and you know they did it with Sean Tucker on the ground. They did it with Garrett Schrader at quarterback. Speaking of Schrader, he's completing 79% of his passes, five touchdowns, zero interceptions, averaging over 250 yards passing per game. He's averaging four yards per carry when he runs the ball, um, and I think he's got 29 carries in this young season, so he is putting it on the ground quite a bit, and he's added three rushing touchdowns to Syracuse's total. On defense, Garrett Williams, a cornerback, 16 tackles, 12 of them solo, a sack and an INT. He's really the defensive leader so far, so the Garretts are getting it done for the Orange out there in upstate New York. Moving on to Duke, who is ranked considerably lower in ESPN's total FPI rankings, but they're 2-0. They started off with a 30-0 shutout at home against Temple. Then they went on the road last weekend and beat Northwestern 31-23. They're getting it done with their running backs. So Duke, number 26 overall in team efficiency, number nine in offensive efficiency because their running backs, Jalen Coleman and Jordan Waters, each averaging over six yards per carry. Coleman's got 6.6 .6 with two touchdowns rushing. Waters, 8.2 yards per carry rushing the football. He's added two touchdowns. And then their quarterback, Riley Leonard, has been efficient. He's been steady. 69% completion percentage, three touchdowns, only one interception, and he's also putting nearly five yards per carry on the ground. Defensively, they've gotten it done uh, with pass defense. Joshua Pickett and Datron Young, Young, a transfer from Iowa State, leading the way. Brandon Johnson also. So they have um, about four or five guys that have already defended successfully three or more passes in just two games, which is uh, pretty impressive. And then they're also getting good linebacker play out of Dorian Mausi and of course Shaka Hayward, who was a an all ACC pick by most people, myself included. And then uh, up front as well, Dwayne Carter at defensive end, Javion Franklin, a former transfer from Notre Dame. Mike Elko knows defense and he's coaching it to these guys and they're doing a pretty good job. And then finally, the Vanderbilt Commodores, they started off really impressive out on the islands and made me look like a fool. I thought that that game was gonna be close. They've hung 63 on a not very good Hawaii team, but it was impressive in how, how aggressive they were in scoring, but also on defense. So Anthony Orgy on defense, he's number five in the nation in tackles. He's got 27 and three games so far. Do the math, that's nine per game. He also has a defensive touchdown. Maxwell Worship at safety, he's got 20 tackles, 15 of them solo, three passes defended, and then a forced fumble. But then you look at offense, two stars stand out. Quarterback Mike Wright, a total of um, 10 touchdowns, six throwing, four rushing. He's only had one interception, completing just 60% of his passes, so that number came down just a bit in their loss last week against Wake Forest, a ranked Wake Forest team who, by the way, was powered by Sam Hartman, an All-American quarterback who tossed four touchdowns against the Commodores. But Mike Wright has certainly given them um, a lot of offense on that side of the ball and a big spark. And he's throwing it to Will Shepard, who right now is having an all SEC type season at receiver, 13 catches, averaging just under 11 yards per catch, but five total touchdowns. So the combination of Mike Wright and Will Shepard has been profitable for Vanderbilt. Again, these four teams are a combined eight and one right now, whereas last year they were only one and four against FBS opponents. So um, Duke plays North Carolina A&T this weekend, so you would presume a victory and a 3-0 start for the Blue Devils. I'd have to look back and see the last time that happened, probably earlier on in the David Cutcliffe regime. And then Vanderbilt travels to DeKalb, Illinois to take on Northern Illinois, an NIU team, by the way, who has a seven-point victory at home against Eastern Illinois, an FCS team, and then a three-point loser on the road at Tulsa last weekend. So Northern Illinois has certainly shown that they can score, but not um, a dominating team. So that's certainly a, a game that the Commodores could go in on the road as an SEC team, and you would hope would put things to rest in terms of, you know, is the SEC higher up 
than the MAC, at least comparing those two teams. So a chance for two of these teams to get their, actually all of these teams to get their third victories and have a combined 12 wins in the first three weeks of the college football season. So my apologies for doubting them, these programs getting off to a good start. Kudos to all four coaching staffs, all four groups of, of uh, players and personnel. So let me say, as a college football fan, rock chalk Jayhawks, go get them Blue Devils, um, beat them Qs, and uh, anchor down Vandy. This is Chappie, this is college football, and this is what I know.